Hey everybody, in this video, I'll show you how to make a custom test point that is a surface mount test point and that is 15 mil round, mils round and whatnot. So if your test points are different, use the same principles. You don't have to use the exact same measurements. If you use the same principles, you'll get your desired outcome, All right? Let's begin. So let's go on Altium and how do you make a component from scratch, right? Well, I've been saving all of my components in my Altium cloud. Altium Designer is the standard for PCB design. This is because it's an all-in-one, feature-rich design environment with a modern, powerful, and unique approach to design. Whether you're designing small or large, simple or complex, Altium Designer has you covered. With support for high speed, HDI, and rigid flex, there's nothing it can't handle. One of the main technologies behind all of these capabilities is the industry-leading interactive routing engine, which is able to push and shove objects, length tune with a built-in electromagnetic field solver, and route at any angle. Schematic Capture is agile and intuitive, enabling users to design flat and hierarchical projects with ease. And a dynamic data model, together with continual compilation, allows for instant availability of netlists and project structure changes, as well as rapid access and editing of a component's properties, models, and parameters. Altium Designer manages data in a convenient and transparent manner with status and lifecycle control. By having all data in one place, users can effortlessly create complete documentation packages for manufacturing and assembly in seconds. A beautifully modern and intelligent unified user interface brings out the full power of your tools in a platform that's easy to use and simple to understand. This means a lower learning curve, allowing you to be proficient in almost no time at all. And with the world's largest international community of electronics design professionals, you're never alone. library all right as opposed to just the local library so i will go ahead and do something new this time how to create or edit generic components if you want more information about how to do that then you can look at this link in the tutorials and whatnot and it'll give you information on how to um, do that but i'll just show you so let's go to design we're going to be designing a schematic library there are no components found within the schematic library but that's expected because we haven't made any yet this component will give it the name you know the name here like the 15 mil round pad you can double click on here and it will pull up the properties this is this is design item id and the designator so this is really kind of a I, I would consider this pad being used as a test point, but you can go with pad, you know, pad question mark. And then the comment for this would be something like 15 mil round pro point. The description test pad that is 15 mils in diameter, standard type, and that's fine. You can add things like footprints so you can see what not, see it and whatnot, but this is fine. The next step is to place a line. You just go ahead, place a line here. Now this is a dashed line. What I'd like to do is, you know, if I'm placing a line, I can always change my parameters by hitting tab, changes properties with tab, choose solid, start line shape. You can make arrows, you can make, you know, you can do a number of things here. So I'm gonna hit the, hit, uh, press this pause button. This line is a little long, so I'll drag this up a bit. And I think that's fine. So the next thing is placing a pin of some kind. I want the pin to be placed here. Now, I need the white part, this white part of this pin that actually connects to a net exposed. Okay. And if I double click on this pin, Maybe I want it to be a little shorter. So instead of 200 mils, I'll set it to 100 mils. 
the pin information, I also don't want to just see this M7. So maybe I'll hide the designator and even hide the name. Next thing is I will place uh, an ellipse. And here I can click once for the center of the ellipse and then choose the radius in one direction and then then in the other direction because I can make like an oval shape. But instead we've made a circle. So now double clicking on this, I want to set my, keep my border at blue, but the fill color, I want it to be blue as well. You can set it to transparent and so on. Um, you know, this is, should be okay. This could be a little large. So what I'll do is change the grid, hit G to change the grid size to from 100 mils in the lower left there to 10 mils only. This way I get a finer and tighter control how big this pin is or this, this uh, circle is. And I'll switch back to my 100 mil grid just to make sure I'm not off grid here. Bring that in a bit. Bring that pin in. And this looks good. I think this looks fine. Now I can save this library as something, maybe I want to call it, um, you know, miscellaneous pins, pads, so on and so forth. And I can put it in my, my project, which folder, which is recommended for, uh, if you're doing all team designer projects locally. Now this needs a footprint. Okay. So what I can do is create a footprint. And to do that, I'd go to my projects folder, right click, I can right click on the project, add a new to the project that would be a PCB library. So in my PCB library, I have an empty component. I can double click on it to give it some kind of name, say 15 mil round pro point, right? And a description, I'll give it the same name. Now in this case, let's say I want the... Okay, so the next step is to go to place a pad this is going to be surface mount only. So I'll go ahead and click and place this pad, but let's make some modifications to this. So if I double click on here, the properties will come out. And instead of being a multi-layer pad, I need this to just be a top layer pad. Notice how that turns into just the top layer. Doesn't have multiple layers or anything like that. And then you can define what the dimensions are, whether you have a test point for fabrication and assembly and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so the next step is to define the size. The X size is 50 mils, that's kind of large. So we'll go 15 mils by 15 mils. You can turn it into a slot or, you know, just a circle, right? And then we want this to have some kind of designator for the pin. And this will make an electrical connection when you try to wire to it. And that's about it. So we'll right click, go ahead and save pad 15 mil, right? Click save. Or actually I saved the PCB library as pad 15 mil when really it should have been like miscellaneous. So what I'll go do is right click, rename this to miscellaneous pins, pads for the PCB library. And I want to make note of this PCB footprint name, which is 15 mil round pro point, because I'll be using that name in the PCB footprint for the schematic library symbol. So what you want to do is add footprint. You can control V to paste. And since the PCB library is local to the schematic folder, it will just pull it up. Or you can specify the library path, library names, uh, it, whatever works for you. Click OK. It gets added with the preview uh, to the, your to your schematic symbol. Go ahead, right click, save this. Close your miscellaneous pads and pins. Save everything. Now we're going to import it to our Altium workspace. So I would like to import the PCB library, uh, PCB footprint first, usually. OK, and then I import my schematic library. 
And I can open the log and then see what component name it was given, like CMP09, you know, uh, six zeros there. Go into my components library and then look for all of my components. See where it got added, maybe in miscellaneous or something like that, right? Okay. I don't see it here. So I can do a search. It doesn't show up in miscellaneous. So I'll choose all. And it shows up here. So then I can double click and paste it and voila. Now, if I were to double click on the pad, look for the footprint, I could show the footprint and it gets shown. And that footprint is, is pulling from the, uh, the appropriate workspace. Okay, so that is how you create a schematic symbol and PCB footprint from scratch for a test point and then add it to your Altium 365 workspace. So you can use it anywhere in your organization. Thanks for watching.